Hi, and welcome to the Respect Man podcast. Today, I have a special guest. His name's Sven, and he is the badass counselor. And I actually found um, Sven on TikTok when I was scro- randomly scrolling through some TikTok videos. And my favorite part about you, Sven, is that every other word, you cuss at people and you just tell them like it is. <laughs> So welcome to the Respect Man podcast. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here, Teresa. I really appreciate you having me on your show. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Mm-hmm. Um, tell the audience a little bit about who you are and what you do and why you do it. Sure. Um, I've had a counseling practice uh, for about the last 30 years, and I call it spiritual counseling. Really, it's soul counseling. Uh, I'm not a psychologist. Don't claim to know anything about psychology. Um, And it's soul stuff, it's spirit stuff, not in terms like God shit, but in terms of a person connecting with who the fuck they really are. And what I've discovered over 30 years of doing this shit is the the problems that arise in relationships, the problem that arises in careers, uh, the problems that arise in families all come from one person or more than one person not being who they really are. And very often they don't know. And because all the pain from their past and their fears and the bullshit beliefs they've been taught about themselves are packed Mm -hmm. on top of it. They can't even hear their own fucking voice. So, so much of what they're doing is a response, a a reaction. Um, And they don't even know a lot of times what those core beliefs are that are down there or what their fears are and so forth. And or that they have feelings packed down there, especially, you know, I was going to say, especially for a lot of guys, but fucking hell it's true of a lot of fucking <laughs> women too, especially, you know, women now under the age of 50, uh, even under age of 60 and a lot of, you know, successful women uh, doing real well in life. And they've been taught, you know, just pack those fucking feelings down. And so one of the big problems in relationships, and I know we, relationships are your wheelhouse, especially, you know, as uh, sex in relationships and so forth. And the shit that fucks up relationships is all the shit from the past that's still resting inside. So what my job is, is I basically reach down somebody's throat and I start pulling out all the shit, all the shit that's packed on top of their real voice. And then I simultaneously reach down their fucking throat and begin to th- pull out their authentic self. And um, and it's hard. It's ugly ass work. And uh, especially if you've been taught your whole fucking life that your feelings or who you really are doesn't fucking matter. And that plays into everything. That plays into sex. That plays into career. As I said, it plays into everything. So I have a counseling practice in Manhattan. Uh, I've written seven books. Uh, Most recently, there's a hole in my love cup, which has become an international bestseller. Crazy enough. Who the hell would ever want to read what the hell I have to say? Clearly, it's a massive lapse of judgment on a part of a lot of people. Uh, but it seems to be helping. So that's good. And uh, we, I have a podcast and uh, I sort of got pushed and pushed to do a podcast. And so that has launched recently. And so just trying to do my little part in my little corner of the world to uh, help people out. So what was it like growing up for you in your life? Did you ever experience like, you know, what, what were, what were your parents like growing up? What kind of relationship experience do you have with that? Sure. Yeah, no, both my parents were World War II generation. They died in the last uh, four or five years, each in their Mm nineties. And uh, I was youngest of six, basically brothers. I had one sister, but she's half boy, half girl, basically. And uh, so I always say there were six of us brothers. And, uh, you know, everybody's, everybody's fighting for attention in a big family. Mm. And uh, so your attention needs go somewhat on that. But I had very loving parents. And they were, you know, my mom's field of expertise was early childhood development, early childhood education. And she taught at the graduate level and dad was a pastor. And so every day of my life, I was told that I was loved every day of my life, I was given a hug and a kiss and and so forth. And so a lot of the positive reinforcement was there. But the part that was missing was, you know, you're fighting for that fucking attention, which ended up playing mm-hmm. out in relationships later. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I, I'm one of those lucky souls that came from largely a wonderful home. Um, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so that's sort of where my background comes from. Well, it's funny you said that. I love that you said my dad was a pastor. I had loving parents. Everything was great. But so often there's some sort of underlining childhood trauma. I mean, it can be yeah. from somebody yeah. at school. You can come from yes. a great home and a great family, but so many people don't even know how to tap into like the problem from their childhood yes. that they've never dealt with that starts leaking out into other areas of their life. That's right. And that? oh, absolutely. And and one of the things I require of all of my clients um, is I require every uh, client to write an autobiography before we even start. 
So, uh, and it has to be under 10 pages and it's basically, so I know their whole story. Wow. I don't charge for the reading of that. So I'll spend a few hours on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just sort of my good faith thing. So I'm coming in knowing their story. And very often what I see is, oh, I had a great childhood, you know, be beaver cleaver, you know, fucking mm -hmm. everything. And, and I always sort of snicker when I see that, because it's like, there's always something and in my home, what it was. And, and the, here's the thing is so many people say, well, it, you know, it's not always the parents that cause the trauma. I very, it can be this, it can be that. And I, over 30 years, it's like, no, it's whoever raised you. I mean, yes, those <laughs> other things, and, or it's the home in which you were raised. So in my case, mm -hmm. uh, the problem was that they had six kids and there's only so much energy, attention, and love that two people can give to six. Mm -hmm. They think of a baby robin in a nest. You got six baby robins and they're all wanting a, a worm jammed down their throat. And so there's only so much that can be given. And so I was always sort of operating at a a deficit of attention, not attention deficit, but just, I wanted more attention, wanted more attention. Mm -hmm. And so what that translated and plus growing up among boys, I was terrified of girls. Oh my fucking God. Just, Oh God. <laughs> and and that affects, I think okay. men are still terrified of girls. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially if they didn't grow around, grow up around them or whatever. And some guys aren't God bless them. But then they're the guys that are always trying to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's usually the guy who is, you know, it's the most insecure. And he's always the one that ends up with the prettiest girl. Cause every, every other guy and see this is the thing. Hold on. So this is the thing. <laughs> so many women say, Oh, why doesn't that guy grow a pair and come up and ask me out? To which I respond, Teresa, I say, let's just think about this a second. So let's say you're 28 and you're saying, why doesn't that guy grow a pair and just ask me out? You know, you're obviously in, mm -hmm. I'm into him. He's, you know, I can tell he's vibing. Like, why does he ask me out? My response is this. Your average guy has been asking girls out since he was probably 12, 13, seventh grade, somewhere in there, eighth grade, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And for every, even the most handsome guy, for every yes he got, he probably got five, mm -hmm. 10 no's. All right. So you protract that experience over one year, two year, four years, eight years for every one. Yes. I'm getting five or 10 no's. Eventually it's like, fuck that shit. I don't want to work that hard. And if it's the prettiest girl or if it's the smartest girl or whatever, it's like, why even bother? She's going to say no. Fuck that shit. I'm going to settle for the girl who has a nice personality, who has a nice smile. And it's just a nice person. I'm not going to aim for the top. I'm going to aim for pretty fucking good. So the reason that guy's not growing a pair is just like he's sick of being gunned down. You know, and it's intimidating. Women are intimidating. And and so, yeah, for a lot of guys, women are scary shit. Mm, and what I've found in my years of research is men fear rejection. Oh, absolutely. Like absolutely. I, 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 I read this book. It's called um, How to Fix Your Marriage Without Talking About It. And in there, they have, they've done studies on even infant boys. But every man will approach a conversation instantly with fear and shame with guilt and shame right mm -hmm. and so when they're approaching a woman they're already feeling like eh, i'm probably not good enough something inside them is telling yes. them that you know they're just battling this mindset and so yeah. to be rejected it just validates that they're you know not good and, enough. and exactly nailed it and so two points on that what I see in my work is, interestingly, women uh, bear the same disease, but in a different sort of iteration, a different form. And that is uh, a woman and men, too. I literally just got off uh, a call with a client uh, right before getting on with you here. And um, very often, uh, but I see it a lot among women, uh, is once you're in the relationship, mm -hmm. I'm afraid to put my nuts out there. I'm afraid to express my truth. I'm afraid to say what I really want, which may very often be regarding sex, or it may be how I feel about this particular feelings. You know what? You're hurting my feelings. Or yeah, it really pissed me off what you did the <laughs> other day. Or no, I don't want to do it that way. Afraid that if I express my truth, you might leave me which is basically rejection. You might walk away from me and then I will be alone. And it's not aloneness in and of itself. It's what happens when I'm alone. When I'm alone, all those voices rise up within. All those voices of the shit I was talking about. See, I'm not pretty enough. See, I'm to this. See, I'm not, a, see, I'm no good. But as long as someone is here, it's a counter message to all those other messages deep inside of me. So I'll do anything to keep someone here because I can't bear those messages from my past inside. But here's the other side of it. Um, you were mentioning how um, men fear that rejection. And, uh, you know, it's interesting with regard to that. I was in probably my late 30s, maybe early 40s. Mm -hmm. And I always had, a, always had anxiety about approaching a woman, whether it was, you know, on a train going into work or whether it was uh, at a bar or at a Starbucks or at a gym or whatever, <laughs> any situation. I was always terrified, right? And so much anxiety. And this is what I talk about with young guys. And then mm. I just reached a point where it's like, you know what? 
and this is sort of part of my own soul development in other areas of my life. And I realized if I'm having to force it, if I'm having to conjure up energy and the courage to go do something, I'm forcing it. 